Hey sports fans. Hey, I wanted to, uh, to do a follow-up clip. So the last thing you saw on the project, uh, install AEM coolant gauge in uh, Little Red, the 1992 300 ZX twin turbo. Uh, the last thing you saw was we did an operational check and yes, indeed, we did do a uh, successful install on the AEM coolant gauge. However, um, it was at that time that we noticed that our gauge cluster, uh, which is the uh, temperature gauge speedo, which did not work even before that install, um, attack, boost pressure, uh, oil pressure, and um, and um, fuel gauge plus uh, odometer, that that entire cluster was not functional. Uh, so we were really. Uh, happy that we had a successful install on the coolant gauge and very 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 uh, upset and and kind of freaked out really is the right right term uh, that we somehow inadvertently uh, took out the uh, the gauge cluster and what that meant and uh, this is an automatic car that the automatic transmission control module gets speed sensor inputs from that gauge cluster um, and so we studied the wiring diagram and what that meant was no overdrive so the car the Z would not shift into uh, fourth gear which is overdrive in this transmission um, the steering became heavy about oh, 20 or 30 miles an hour to the point that you couldn't really uh, it was very difficult to drive and, and that is because also speed sensor uh, inputs go to the, the high speed interactive computer aided steering the high cast system and to, uh, so the steering is dependent upon that cluster functioning properly. And then not to mention the fact that we, you know, the odometer is not working and we, and, and so, and the fuel gauge. So, uh, so all bad, but uh, the good news is that it is working again. I just wanted to show you one more time real quick where we ended up mounting the uh, AEM coolant gauge. So you see it right there. Um, just to the left of the steering column and if I back the camera off you'll see the this is the AEM boost gauge GPS speedo uh, Zitronic ZT4 air fuel ratio gauges and so <clears throat> all of these gauges are now are, are in here they're all functional and the gate OEM gauge cluster which is super important to the functioning of this car is also uh, working and I'm going to tell you what what we did so we're gonna walk back here in the house filming and then I'm gonna show you what you need to avoid if you're gonna install aftermarket gauges be very 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 careful so what I'm showing you right now this is a picture of kind of a blown up view of of the kick panel fuse block in the Z which is down in, in the most uh, inopportune place imaginable to get to uh, down by the driver's uh, left foot, you have to remove a couple of trim pieces. There's a kick panel uh, piece, and then the door trim has to come off for that piece to come off. So you have to remove that, and then you have full access to that fuse block. Well, if you look on this, and I'm going to point to it. Do you see this fuse right here? This 10 amp fuse with the word meter? Well, that just so happens based on this wiring diagram and I'm not going to walk you through it but this is the actual wiring diagram for the OEM instrument uh, cluster and that fuse is that we just showed you and by the way there's also a um, a troubleshooting procedure for the the gauges uh, the gauge cluster in the factory service manual um, it's not very helpful, except that it does say check the fuse. It doesn't say which fuse, so you have to <laughs> you have to figure that out by going to the wiring diagram. But I'm telling you, so you don't have to do any of those things. It's this one, and it just so happens in the previous install of three different things, we had them all routed um, and jumpered using a really cool aftermarket fuse extender jumper uh that we bought from amazon they're really great it, it keeps you from having to splice in wires however i had we had the trigger wire to the um aeromoto 16 307 phantom uh fuel pump harness which is a 12 volt trigger to turn flip the 
a relay for the fuel pump, thereby turning on the fuel pump. We had it connected here initially. Then we added the GPS speedo to the same jumper. To and, and, and remember, that's the instrument panel uh, fuse. And then we added the AEM boost gauge. And they were all jumpered to this uh, meter 10 amp fuse with no problem. Nothing was wrong. It all worked. Everything worked until we added in the AEM coolant gauge and we didn't we didn't try to add it here and we thought we were smart We're gonna add it up here in the cigarette lighter, which is a 20 amp Fuse um, and it's in the accessory meaning it's never it's not on until the keys at least in accessory mode uh, or on all the way and so we installed that of course we had to disconnect this and uh, in order to do all the wiring uh, and then we put it back together and guess what the OEM gauge cluster did not function. So after a couple of days of doing our homework, getting this diagram, getting this wiring diagram, tracing it out, learning it, uh, looking at this troubleshooting procedure, we determined that, and of course the first thing we did was <laughs> uh, disconnect this, uh, the uh, AEM coolant gauge from this jumper to the SIG lighter 20 amp fuse, that had no effect on the, the OEM cluster. It still did not function. Uh, but because something happened, a combination of things happened. But what we did do is we took this 10 amp um, jumper that has the AEM uh, boost, GPS speedo and the trigger wire for the aeromotive fuel pump harness. And we moved it over to this wiper, 20 amp fuse. But guess what? The uh, the um, the instrument cluster did not function. So of course we put this tan amp fuse back in where it belonged. Did not function. So we thought, okay, uh, let's just drop down here to this EPS high cast 15 amp and try it there. We plugged it, that those three, uh, which are on an extender, fuse extender into this. We plugged the uh, AEM coolant gauge back into lighter, turned it, started the car, I uh, actually just turned the key as it was starting. We could see that we had the OEM gauge cluster was back. It was happy. Um, and just to prove a point to myself that there's an impedance. Impedance is a combination of, of inductance, capacitance, uh, resistance. Those three things together are, are create a, a resistance uh, overall to voltage and, and to current. And if you look at the wiring diagram and you study it, you'll see that the gauge cluster is looking for a certain impedance. And if there's a big enough mismatch in the impedance, not, it's not just the voltage that it needs, but if it's, it's also looking at impedance. And if there's a big enough mismatch in that impedance and what the instrument cluster wants, it's not gonna function. Um, so, cause we moved the, uh, like I said, we moved this jumper over to here and, and put a 10 amp back in here and it was still unhappy. It didn't want anything in this row. So stay away from this, <laughs> this fuse. If you're installing aftermarket gauges, stay away from this fuse location. Yes, I had it, uh, two gauges and a trigger wire plugged in there for a very long time, about two months um, or so. And it worked fine until I added another uh, gauge to this circuitry and this meter um, needs to be left alone it needs to have a 10 amp in it and needs not be bothered the more you unplug and plug in fuses in this old uh, fuse block by the way the more chance you're gonna just there's just wear and tear and the, the soldered wires on the back you, they may crack it, it's just of course every time you touch a car you're introducing the possibility of chaos theory um and, and and inevitably, if you touch it enough, you're gonna introduce problems, and that's what I did. And I feel really stupid, but the good news is we figured it out. So stay away from this fuse. Don't don't uh, wire any aftermarket things to it. You got other choices, the cigarette lighter. I, I don't use the one in my car. I, I power a radar detector with it. It's a 20 amp location. This 15 amp high cast also location works good. You could probably use the um, this AS, this is automatic uh, speed control device. Mine's deleted. I could probably go right there 
could have went there. Didn't didn't even think to move it down. I just thought I, I want a little bit more amps. I'm gonna go with a 15 amp fuse here. And so I did and everything works. So that's the moral of the story. Uh, be very careful. Do not jumper anything to this meter fuse. That is the fuse to the OEM gauge cluster. All right, okay, till next time, take care. Thanks for watching the Bavisty in the Land Channel.